r slash ask reddit serious parents of children who have committed suicide could you explain the experience my brother committed suicide in april of 2011 he shot himself in my old bedroom my mom was home when it happened my dad was on a business trip the last three years i've watched them both deal with the grief in their own ways my mom feels like she should have recognized the signs earlier and forced him to get help because she had also been depressed she's handling it as well as she can some days i see her completely fall apart other days she can understand it was not her fault there is no understanding why he left a typed up note in microsoft word up on their home computer it had no answers my dad has only gotten worse he is 100 percent convinced it is all his fault and will listen to no one he was strict with us growing up and thinks he gave us the fear and anxiety that was finally too much for my brother to handle. He will not celebrate any holidays. He refuses to see his mother, or do any group activities that might remind him of my brother. He no longer hunts or goes near guns. Anything that could possibly remind him of my brother is completely cut out of his life. Everything that he used to enjoy is now off limits. I feel like I have lost a father. It is hard for him to see me. Because he feels like he failed as a parent and it is confusing to have one child still alive. He will openly talk to me about these things. But he can seem to shake the darkness and the emptiness. He feels guilty anytime he is happy. He feels like if he moves forward it is leaving my brother behind. I'm sorry this is so jumbled up. I'm on my phone and this is a hard, hard subject. Edit. Ro. Thank you so much for sharing with me. Talking about this has been extremely helpful. And for the most part everyone has been so supportive and kind. I don't know what to say. Besides thank you. Reddit. You are all amazing. I'm going to sleep with a lot of love in my heart tonight. My dad found my brother after he hung himself. I still remember him crying and wailing that day. Judging by him I'm gonna take a guess that you'll be lucky to find anyone who will discuss it. And even mentioning my brother to my dad makes him clam up. Without going into details. It's pretty much the only thing that shuts my dad up. This may sound harsh but my dad is a raging narcissist. But despite our differences I still have no idea how he sleeps after finding my brother. My dad died of cancer the 23rd of April 1991. I came home from school on the 30th and found my mom dead from suicide. My dad died at home and hospice left all kinds of meds there and she overdosed. She had written a note and had my neighbor sign it and told her to come back in a few hours but she never did. So when I got home from school I found my mom dead against the front door. I tried to pick her up and hoped I could save her I guess but it was too late. I flipped out literally was crazy for a while after. At first I hated her and thought it was selfish. She literally couldn't live without my dad. I don't feel that way anymore. I think she would have lived a miserable life afterwards. Dealing with that has made me the kind of person that tries to find something good in bad situations. My son attempted suicide when he was 17. My stepdaughter found him in the morning hugging the toilet, but unresponsive. We found the bottle of pills and knew what he had done right away. We called an ambulance and got him help and thankfully he made a complete recovery. We didn't find his note for a few days after and it tore me up what he was thinking. I honestly can't say much else about what it was like cause most of it is a blur of doctors, nurses, and psychiatrists. I only remember feeling that my life was over if he didn't recover. Edit just realized that I'm not sure if my son is a redditor or not. But if you see this, I hope you don't mind me sharing. He would know my username if he saw it. Edit first. Thanks for the gold. Next. I can't believe all the responses and PMS I've gotten that my post made people reconsider suicide themselves. I'm humbled and stunned that this many were considering it. My best friend killed himself a week after my failed suicide attempt two years ago. He only told me his new tendencies and I didn't give it enough merit. He didn't die from the hanging and was in intensive care with life support for a week. We all hoped he would wake up but we knew it would be time until the plug would be pulled. The funeral was awful. His mom told me, don't ever let this happen again. Part of me died. I carried his casket down to the hearse and have never felt more weight in my life. It hurts. I can't tell if his mom was trying to be nice or a beach. Understandably so. But still, to you. Like what? 
my best friend committed suicide last year, and since then I've spent a lot of time with his mom telling stories about him, trying to keep her busy, and just listening to her share whatever she wants to share. I won't comment here about my own demons resulting from my friend's suicide, but I'll try to tell you how she feels and what she thinks she needs to do going forward. She was in complete shock initially, as we all were because it was totally out of the blue. And in our first interactions following my friend's death she only wanted to hear happy stories about him. My friends and I all visited frequently, and we shared the jokes and stories from high school and college we would probably never tell our parents under normal circumstances. She really wanted to hear any and all stories about her son that would make her laugh, regardless of context. A lot of people in the community offered my friend's parents a ton of support during that time, and they did the best they could to put on a straight face and lovingly accept our efforts. As the weeks went on and the memorial service passed, a lot of people who had reached out and supported her shortly after my friend's death dropped off the radar, and the reality of the situation started to set in for all of us who were close to him. This was mid-fall, and the loneliness coupled with increasingly poor weather began taking its toll. Her therapist essentially ran out of supportive things to say at the time, and their sessions devolved into my friend's mom repeatedly being told time will fix this, and you'll be okay down the road. So she ended her therapy. This was, without a doubt, the most difficult time for her, and although it was the time when she needed support the most, it was the time when her support was slowly disappearing. She started several walking groups with friends after that. Several of whom are parents who lost their children under various circumstances. One to suicide. And she walks very regularly. She also spends a lot of time watching uplifting movies and working on crossword puzzles. I take her out to play golf from time to time. And she seems to enjoy that. Emotionally, she still has a long road ahead. It's been almost 7 months. And she and her husband are slowly making progress. But from what she has told me, she's understandably still not far from square one. Some days are better than others, but she's still suffering immensely, and it breaks my heart. She told me that she's slowly coming to terms with the fact that she will never understand why her son did what he did, but that it's a fact she must face and accept. Still, she's in a bad enough place mentally that she's almost written off the value of her own life and what she means to her husband, her other son and the rest of us who love her. When I talked with her a few days ago, she said she almost wished for death so her own personal pain could stop. That was devastating to hear, to say the least. However, I can see that she has a positive outlook for the future. She knows that the pain from the loss of her son will never go away and will be there in her heart every single day for the rest of her life. But she also knows that she has to go on living her own life, and that she still has many people who love her and depend on her. She's slowly getting back to the activities she enjoys doing. She has also realized that very few people, including her therapists, can ever truly understand what she's dealing with. But she has her own life to continue living and she has a lot of happiness ahead of her. Too long didn't read. Best friend committed suicide last year and I've spent a significant amount of time with his mom listening to what she has to say. I have confidence she'll be okay and hopefully even truly happy again down the road. But she'll never be the same. OP. If you're the parent of a kid who committed suicide. You can honestly PM me and ask anything. It sucks worse than anything. But I'm truly happy to try and help anyone in this situation. My brother committed suicide before I was born. They haven't said a word but I can still feel the despair in my parents heart. It makes them seem like they failed and that it was their responsibility to keep him not only alive but also happy. He was my brother, all of ours baby brother, 8 siblings, he was number 8, he was 48, he was single, with a beloved dog, he lost his job and struggled to find another, he developed anxiety, panic, insomnia and depression, doc gave him pills, but it takes many weeks for them to kick into a positive effect, he promised he would not off himself, I was the only other sib locally, I am number 6. I looked after him after our mother died suddenly when he was only 8. I was 14. We were never the same after that. He was very close with dad. Dad died 2 years prior after a hellish lengthy painful lung disease made him ill. So it was just us. The kids. All grown. Losing his job seemed to freak him out and he kept in contact with number 5 sis via telephone and email quite a bit. Also with me. 
to a lesser degree. Doc gave him pills but he couldn't cope. We did not know how bad it had gotten. The last day we heard from him he was looking for help but said nothing about suicide. I started hunting for therapists for him. The next day was quiet. Life goes on. As you know, with everyone else you need to take care of and deal with. We thought he was still job hunting and he did have friends also who checked in with him. The next day, no one could reach him. Number 5 sis in Caliph called police for well being check. Called me, and a nephew nearby. Later my grown son. I drove like the wind. I had no house key. He was a very private person. The police broke in the door. They came out and told me what I already knew. He owned a handgun. He took his own life. He could no longer deal with the pain and fear. He was my brother. I took care of him as best I could when he was a kid. He is the only one I remember coming home from the hospital with mom. I spoke to Ellie. I had to see him. I told them I saw him into this world and I will see him out again. He appeared asleep. It wasn't too gory. Thank heaven. My poor baby brother. We all loved him but we could not save him. I know this is too long didn't read but that only covers one day. I had to gather all his personal items. He had closed his life. Cancelled his season tickets. Left instructions about dog care. Left all his stuff. Wallet etc. On the table for us to find. It was horrible. It tore us apart. There was much fighting. Anger. Blame. Sadness. Guilt. Backstabbing due to trauma of his death. Esp with sis number 7. The older ones never seemed to have much to say. Although I know they cared. Later we had to turn back his car. Take some stuff from his house. Let it go into foreclosure. Oh geez. It was so emotionally devastating. We knew why but why couldn't he have held on? It is often said suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. This is the truth. Our family will never be the same. We miss him every day and each of us carries our own burden of what we could have done. Should have done. Might have done and on and on. His friends were also devastated. It's been two years now. Time is starting to heal. I will never, ever forget that day. The police were kind but kept asking me questions. Had I not had the nephew and my son with me I probably would have lost my own mind. Too long didn't read. A family suicide kills a part of each and every member of that family. I just want to add that IT was only 6 weeks from when he got fired to the day he died. And that telling our story really helped me. My brother committed suicide when I was young. From my perspective my dad handled everything well for a few days. My dad's parents came down for the funeral and my dad came home drunk one evening and went straight to bed. My grandparents were furious he even touched alcohol. Well after they left a huge town drama started. Something about my brother's fiance shooting him instead. It got so bad that my dad, the fiance, a neighbor and a cop had to have a sit down to get the facts straight. After this all died down my dad was upset it had suicide as cause of death on the death certificate and tried to have it changed to accidental causes since my brother was drunk at the time. Then he got really depressed for years. All he would do is lie in bed, cry, or do drugs. He is beginning to get better. He still looks at pictures around that time asking if he looked sad, or he blames my brother's fiance for it or accuses her for shooting him sometimes. I hope this helped answer your question a bit even though I'm not a parent. Too long didn't read my dad did well for a while then it crushed him. 2am and the doorbell rings. My husband answers it and there are two policemen standing at the door. The only thing I can think of is that my son has done something to get himself arrested. But that's just not adding up. We let them in and go into the kitchen where they have us sit down. Your daughter was found dead in her apartment. Words that have been burned into my brain and will haunt me until the day that I die. It isn't something that you can accurately describe with words. The soul crushing pain bursts through your body with such force. And there's nothing you can do but sit there and scream and sob and just say no 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 over and over again. I'm so sorry for you loss the officers say as they leave the house. I run and grab my one son who still lives at home and tell him to never ever leave me. Promise me. He keeps promising but I can't bear to let him go. The worst part of the whole ordeal has to be notifying everyone that your daughter has decided to kill herself. Phone call after phone call of saying the words Melissa's dead only to break down every single time. I had to do this dozens of times the next day. And after every call I thought the knife to my heart couldn't be pushed deeper.
couldn't be twisted any harder, but it would. I had never seen my husband cry before, but at her funeral as this song came on he grabbed one of our sons who had to hold him up as he sobbed in a way no son should ever have to see a father cry. He lost his only daughter as well, and sometimes the sorrow I feel for him can hurt just as much. I always thought if she could have seen the hundreds of people at her funeral, or if she could have known about the thousands of lives she would have ended up touching throughout her life, that she wouldn't have done it. Unfortunately, depression can blind you. I like to think we've handled it in the healthiest way possible since then. Pictures of her are everywhere in the house. We talk about her all the time, remember her in the good times, and tell ourselves that she's no longer in pain. But not a day has gone by over the last 5 years where I have not thought of her and gotten that pang in my stomach. At night I get to be with her in my dreams. Only to wake up in the morning and be reminded she's gone. Forever. She was the only other female in a house of boys. The one I could really confide in. And talk about things the boys would never dream of. She was a huge piece of me. And because of that I will never be whole again. As with all my children. I love her more than anything in the world. I would give my life for one more moment with her. Just one more hug from my little girl. I miss her so much. Throw away for obvious reasons. It was and is still very hard. It just sort of hits you in the chest like a rock. I walked in and he was just hanging there with a typical note thing. He seemed like a normal kid enjoyed video games had a few friends. A girlfriend he wasn't the most popular but was smart and had a nice college lined up for him and everything but every day since then I wake up and the room is still there with all his stuff and to this day I still hope to see him walk in from college or with a wife and his kids. My grandkids. It won't happen and never will but I can't help from breaking down. It's like having the best thing you ever created and just taken from you instantly. I feel like I failed. All the time. I could have done so much better been a better father please seek help if you are committing suicide. I will not be replying to this post or using this account any longer. My daughter was 15. The youngest of 3. It was a few days before Christmas. She had been out with her sister and mother getting their hair done and shopping all day. Everyone was in a good mood. We decorated the Christmas tree that night. Later that evening we were all together after supper and I was cutting her brother's hair. My wife noticed her missing and asked if anyone knew where she was. It would not have been unusual for her to step outside to talk to a friend. After about 20 minutes or so we started getting worried. My wife checked her room and I checked outside and down the street. My daughter had been diagnosed bipolar but the doctors had decided against medication. In her room. Her door was unlocked and her phone was on her bed. Her radio was on. I don't know why I thought to check her closet. I found her just sitting there and said baby, what are you doing? Then I saw the shoelace. I yelled for my wife to call 911. I could not get the string off of her neck so I ran to my office to get a knife. When I cut her down I knew it was too late. She was cold. Blue. I performed CPR until the police arrived. I remember every single small detail about that night. Sounds. Smells. The song playing on her radio. Everything. Since that night everything has changed. Her sister and best friend became depressed and antisocial. Her brother seems to have bottled everything up. We had to give her dog away. He would not leave her room. My wife basically went crazy. She took months off of work and was not really functional for over a year and is not the same person she used to be. I was the one who had to remain strong. Keep working and try to keep everything together. Imagine watching everyone around you lose their shit and there is nothing you can do to help. You have to stay strong. They need to know that they can rely on you. You try to keep it together and carry on so that there is food on the table and a roof over your heads but inside you are a broken mess. You are dad damn it and you can't break down or your house of cards will fall. I hope that this helps someone. I have been reading this thread. Being really thankful that I had nothing to contribute until I remembered that I do. Funny how my mind can just take shit and say oh that. Well that doesn't really count. My daughter attempted suicide while I was on the phone with her. I was 2000 miles away. She was drunk and cutting her wrists. I didn't know where she was. I knew the town. But it was not a small town and I couldn't direct the police because I didn't know where she was. I tried to call other relatives to pinpoint her location. But no one was home. 
I finally called a friend of hers who knew where she was and was able to find her and get her to a hospital. I screamed so hard that I literally could not talk for days afterwards. I don't remember if that was while I was on the phone with her, or while I was trying to find her help. I just know it was the loudest scream of my life and it came from sheer desperation and despair. Thank god she lived. Thank god she lived. Thank god she lived. I won't even pretend to imagine I can explain what it would have been like if she didn't make it. I don't even want to. Thank ducking god she lived. My son suicided on the 2nd of July, 2009. The day my world collapsed on and I've spent the past 5 years in various forms of therapy and grief counseling. The grief is enormous. The guilt, at times, can be overwhelming. The what if CTC, the anger, which comes in waves, can knock me on my ass. I'm just getting to the point where I can say that I have no children. I remember when my mom came to my room and told me that her friend's son had hanged himself and that the mother would be coming over in a bit for some support. I can recall wondering how I should act when I was told this, because it didn't really resonate at first. I just said okay and went back to my game I think. I was only 12, but what sticks with me most was walking down the stairs and hearing the most agonized crying from the dining room. She kept repeating how she couldn't remember the last thing he wore. How she was an awful mother and really it was one of the scariest things I had ever encountered at that point. I had never heard anyone cry like that since. She got a bit better after a few years. She was a very strong, positive woman and a great role model for my awkward teenage self. She even took me to do stuff when my parents were busy and I was more or less friendless and I really appreciated that at the time. Then she moved to Vancouver and struggled with heroin addiction until she overdosed and died. I miss her. I'm not the parent, but I unfortunately have experience with this. My husband's stepfather committed suicide on Christmas Day 2012. My husband has a half-brother, the deceased stepfather's son, who was 8 years old at the time. All of Christmas Day my husband and his mom shut themselves in his mom's bedroom crying and grieving. I spent the whole day trying not to let the little brother know anything was wrong. I didn't know what else to do. He and I played countless video games and board games and I tried so hard not to cry or let him worry. The kid isn't stupid though. The absence of his family on Christmas day made it pretty obvious something was wrong. All I could think of was duck his stupid stepfather for choosing that day. Duck him for being so selfish. I was so angry that he abandoned his kid and ruined Christmas for an innocent sweet little kid. I was also angry that my husband and his mom left me to handle the situation. I'm not angry anymore, though. The little brother later recounted that day to a child therapist who actually told me I did a good thing that day. He doesn't remember that day as a sad one. It was an unusual day he apparently said, but he remembers me playing games with him all day and I gave him my full attention. He remembers having fun. I just felt such a weight on me that day. I worry about him though. I hope he grows up to not have the same depressive problems his dad obviously had. He really likes that show Resurrection. Which makes me sad because I think it is a sign he wants his dad to come back to life and hasn't come to terms with his death. I just don't know how a person is supposed to deal with shit like that. It tears your heart out. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.